These books changed my life. Bonjour à tous! J'espère que vous allez bien. I hope that you guys are doing well. If you're new to my channel, I'm Tiff. I'm an American living in Paris here to help you navigate life abroad, navigate life in Paris. And I am so excited about today's topic, which is the seven books that changed my life in Paris and beyond. So I really wanted to make this video just because, you know, I feel like there are so many people who are going through a major life change, a major transition, who are trying to get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable. You know, I feel like these are all the things that I'm experiencing right now. And and for those of you guys who have followed me for a while, you know that living in Paris has come with so many ups and downs, so many moments where I had to get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable. And I really wanted to share with you guys, you know, some of the books that have really helped me, you know, through these more transitional periods in life to see if they could help you as well. So I've actually put these books in order of the time in my life that I read them, just for you guys to kind of see, you know, what mindset I was in at the time when I read this book, you know, how it helped me or what I was looking for help with um, to see if that resonates with you. And if you are someone who is just going through it right now you know maybe you're going through a major life change a transition maybe you're feeling super stuck I mean I know for me lately I've been feeling all the things I really have um, but if if you're feeling any of this this video is totally for you and also drop me a comment um, letting me know maybe what you're going through if you feel open to it um, I would really love for us to just support each other through the comments um, so that would be great and then without further ado let's get into the seven books that have completely changed my life so starting with the first book which is you are are a badass. How to Stop Doubting Your Greatness and Start Living an Awesome Life by Jen Sincero. So I love, love, love this book, you guys. Um, this is totally for you if you are finding yourself in a super stuck place, if you are, you know, if you're someone who has like all these limiting beliefs or fears about, you know, maybe something that you want to do. Because in this book, Jen Sincero talks a lot about, you know, how to push past limiting beliefs, fear-based thoughts, you know, doubt, guilt, all the things that could be holding you back from living a life that you want to live, making the money that you want to make, and also loving yourself through it all. Um, this book honestly helped me out a lot and when I read it I was actually living in New York City so this was right before I moved to Paris and I had found myself in this super stuck place in my life where I was so over my career um, I wasn't sure if I should just look for another job in PR or make a different change I could definitely feel like it was time to kind of get out of my comfort zone but I just had no idea how to do that and I actually had like a 30 minute free consultation call with a career counselor and I was just kind of talking to them about the areas where I'm feeling stuck and my limited beliefs and whatnot and she was just kind of like have you heard of Jen Sincero and I was like no and she was like oh my gosh you would love this book you are a badass um, so she's actually the person who suggested that I read this book and oh my gosh it was a game changer for me and honestly a few months after reading it I was off to Paris um, to get my MBA so yeah this book helped me so much when I found myself um, in a place where I was feeling super stuck and I'll read you guys a few of my favorite quotes from the book so um, the first quote, and this is actually in the introduction of the book. So it says, you can start out with nothing and out of nothing and out of no way, a way will be made. And um, that was by Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith. Um, and I love, love, love that quote. And I feel like it's been guiding me through and through. And then um, another one that I really liked was, follow what feels good in the moment, every moment, and it will lead you through a most excellent life. Um, so I'll give you those, you know, little words of wisdom from this book. But honestly, I have so much of this book highlighted just because there are so many powerful life lessons, um, so many methodologies that will really help you overcome your limited beliefs and put you on the path to um, your purpose and your success. So I love this book. It's such a good one. And also, guys, as I'm making my way through this list, definitely let me know in the comments if you've read the book that I'm sharing. And if you have read it, let me know the biggest life lesson that you learned um, out of the book. And then if you haven't read the book, let me know if it's one that you'd want to add to your list based off of what you're going through right now. I'd love to hear from you. And then the next book I have for you guys is The Alchemist, which I'm sure you guys have heard about. Um, I'm, I'm honestly obsessed with this book. Like, I love it. Um, and it basically tells the story of a little boy, he's a shepherd living in Spain, who has these reoccurring dreams that there's a treasure waiting for him in the pyramids of Egypt. And he decides to embark on this journey and in a sense discover um, what uh, the book refers to as his personal legend, which is 
basically his life's purpose. And on his way to the pyramids of Egypt, he meets so many different people who help guide him in his journey. And one person in particular who he meets is an alchemist. And he actually kind of helps him in a sense discover um, his true self, you know, who he really is. But it's such an amazing book if you are someone who is, you know, kind of on the path to discovering your life's purpose. It has so many powerful life lessons that honestly have helped me so much. So when I read this book, um, this was back in 2018. I was just about to graduate from my MBA here in Paris and I was just in this point in my life where I was just like, okay, Tiff, like, what are you going to do? Are you just going to move back to the States? Are you going to try and figure things out here in Paris? You know, I had really fallen in love with Paris to the point where I was like journaling almost every week by the Eiffel Tower, just about my future plans and dreams of living here. And, um, you know, I was also very much in a place where I was trying to understand, you know, what was my purpose in life? You know, what did I really come here to do? Um, I was trying to look for the signs and whatnot. So I think I personally read this book at the perfect time um, for me. And I'll share with you guys uh, a few of my favorite quotes from this one. Ooh, so this section of the book, I think it's when he meets the king. So he meets, he meets the king of Salem who offers him wisdom and is kind of talking to him about, you know, his personal legend, which is, you know, his life's purpose. So um, the boy is basically asking like, what is a personal legend? And the king says, it's what you have always wanted to accomplish everyone when they are young knows what their personal legend is and then he goes on to say when you really want something it's because that desire originated in the soul of the universe it's your mission on earth and when you want something all the universe conspires and helping you to achieve it like oh my god I have chills as I'm reading this to you guys and um, so yeah I'm so grateful that I read this book at the perfect time for me and again would highly highly recommend it. So the next up is The Big C um, by the wonderful Langston Hughes um, and this is actually his autobiography where he talks a lot about the time he spent in Harlem and in Paris and actually all over the world as he was becoming all that we know him to be now and I really love this book because it was so interesting and so cool just to have the perspective of a black creative back in the day who traveled the world and who was also in New York City and Paris and you know did whatever he could to make his dream of becoming a writer um, come to fruition. And I think I love this book so much too because I love learning from other people's experience, you know, learning from their stories. Um, and honestly, a lot of what he shares in this book also resonated with me. And I'll share actually one of my favorite parts of the book um, in, a, in a bit. But when I read this book, I was um, actually working in corporate here in Paris, but uh, you know, wasn't really loving my work environment. Um, I was actually getting sick a lot just from stress. And you know, now that I'm on the other side of it, I also think I was just getting sick from just not being in alignment with you know what I knew I really wanted to do. And I also think that this is why uh, this this book resonated with me too, is because you know this is someone who didn't listen to what everyone was saying and you know didn't take the traditional path and went off to travel the world and do all of these things to really discover his purpose and bring it to life so so yeah this is such a great book and I will read to you one of my favorite parts that really resonated with me so in this section of the book um, he's visiting his father who you know had a very uh, very strict plan um, for his life at the time so he writes on the way back to the ranch my father suddenly announced that he had made up his mind to have me studying mining engineering and then Langston says but I can't be a mining engineer I'm no good at mathematics and then he asked Langston well what do you want to be and he goes I don't know but I think a writer and he goes a writer a writer, do they make any money? But I love that part of the book because I could totally relate to that, you know, and I, I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to this. It's like my parents had a very traditional uh, path for me. You know, they wanted me to become an accountant and then be set for life. But I was like, uh, that's not resonating with me. And I'm really not that great at math. You guys can let me know if you can relate to that too. Just, you know, having um, parents or you know a mentor or just someone who's kind of telling you to take a more traditional path to maybe success or making money um, when you and your heart know that that's not exactly what you want to do because I've had those feelings so many times again when I was in school and wanted to switch my major to marketing and wanted to work in fashion to me wanting to move to Paris I feel like each step of the way people were like nope 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 this isn't gonna work out and, I'm, and again I'm so grateful for just trusting my gut so 
Very good read, highly recommend. So then the next book on my list is The Empath Survival Guide, Life Strategies for Sensitive People by Judith Orloff. So I'm looking at my phone because I actually listened to this one on Audible. Um, but this book is totally for you if you are someone who identifies as an empath or a highly sensitive person. Um, it's honestly all about, you know, those people who constantly feel overwhelmed or can feel other people's emotions um, or people who have been labeled as too sensitive and people thinking it's a negative thing, which hello, that's me to a T. Um, but the book is all about, you know, really exploring your sensitivity in a way that actually unlocks your gifts. And I actually came across this book uh, through a friend of a friend. I think she had posted it on her Instagram stories and I was like, whoa, what is this book? It sounds like I need it. And I absolutely did need it at the time that I was reading it. And at the time when I um, will listen to this book, I was again, still working in corporate here in Paris, but I was becoming super, super sensitive to the work environment. Like it was like, I could feel everything. I could feel everyone's emotions, especially when they were not so happy, which unfortunately was a lot of people on the team at the time. And um, we actually worked in a very open space. You know, they wanted to kind of make it a bit more modern. So you know, there weren't any like set offices. It's like everyone kind of worked in this open space, which, you know, for someone who's highly sensitive like me, wasn't the best because it just felt like I could feel everything. So there were days when I would literally just go into a phone booth and just work all day just so I wasn't consumed with the energy of other people. Um, but this book helped me out so much. And, you know, I'm actually trying to become a retired empath because I do not want to feel other people's emotions all of the time. But again, this book was just super, super helpful. And I'll read a few of uh, the quotes from the book um, that really helped me out a lot. So the first one is, if you feel as if you don't fit into this world, it's because you're here to create a better one. And it says author unknown. Um, but that is a quote that um, she has in the book. And I love this one because, and especially when I was working in corporate, I was just feeling like, oh my gosh, like I don't fit in here. Like, why don't I fit? And that was constantly on my mind. And when I saw this quote, I was like, oh my gosh. I get it now. So a really great book. Again, you can read it, you can get it on Audible, which is what I did, but um, it's a good one. And then moving on to The Path Made Clear, Discovering Your Life's Direction and Purpose. And this is by the one and only Oprah Winfrey. Um, so this is another gem, you guys. So this book is basically a compilation of um, different interviews that she did with very successful people um, and thought leaders about you know how they discovered their life's purpose and also how they found you know clear direction in their life to kind of get them to where they wanted to be. But this is such a good one, you guys. She talks to so many people like, um, again, Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith, Jay-Z, Gabrielle Bernstein, Brene Brown, Kerry Washington, Shonda Rhimes. I mean, the list goes on. There are so many powerful, just thought leaders um, who speak on their direction and life's purpose um, in this book. So highly recommend it. And when I read this book, um, actually my mom gave me this book around the time when I was just about to end my contract working in the luxury beauty industry here. And I was freaking out about being unemployed. I was freaking out about, you know, trying to figure out if I could do this YouTube thing or start a business. Like there was so much unknown in my life. And I was just like, Tiff, like, what are you doing? You need direction. Like, what is your purpose? Like, what is going on? So this book was right on time and just offered me a lot of guidance and wisdom from people who have been in my position before who have found themselves in a point in their life where they weren't sure what they should do or what direction to take. And um, what I also love about it, and this is actually something that my mom had always told me to do growing up is to look at famous failures, you know, look at people who have really made it in life, but you know, in their beginning stages, you know, either had a tough time or found themselves feeling stuck or, you know, failed at something. And I feel like this book just brings light to a lot of that, you know, that, you know, we all go through it in life. We all go through things that we don't like. We all go through these frustrating periods in life. So yeah, these uh, stories really offered me a lot of guidance and wisdom. And I'll share with you um, a few of my favorite quotes from this one. So the first one is find your lane, make space for the flow to show itself, follow the natural rhythm of your life and you will discover a force far greater than your own. Um, and that one was by Oprah. And then another one that I loved was, um, this is by Kerry Washington. I really believe that if I want something, God has three answers. It's either yes, 
yes, but not right now, or no, because I have something better in store for you. So I loved that. And again, guys, it doesn't have to be God. It can be the universe. Again, whoever you believe in, whatever higher power you believe in. And I love this one because I think that a lot of us just get so frustrated when we don't see those things that we really want showing up immediately or at the time that we want it. But I love that. Um, it's either yes, yes, but not right now, or no, because I have something better in store for you. So that's a really good one. And then next up is, and sorry guys, I really do not know what happened to the cover of this book, but it's called The Universe Has Your Back, Transform Fear to Faith, and it's by Gabrielle Bernstein. So I've actually read a lot of Gabby Bernstein's books. Um, I actually was introduced to her, um, her books back when I was, oh my gosh, this is when I was living in San Francisco. So I must have been like, what, 23, 24? This is around 2013. Um, and my cousin was talking to me a lot about her books. I've actually even uh, gone to see her speak in San Francisco and in New York um, because yeah, in San Francisco, I was going through it at work too. I'm seeing a common trend here. I feel like the universe was just pushing me out of that space for me to work for myself. But this book, um, The Universe Has Your Back, is all about just letting go of the need to control everything and just trusting that God, the universe, um, you know, a higher power really has your back and is guiding you all the way through. You know, and once you do this, you know, once you truly transform your fear into faith, you're really able to step into your power, your happiness, your truth, um, and all of the good things that we want to step into. So this was a really great read for me. And I actually read this book when I took my trip to Corsica. It was kind of like my beach read. And then again, came at the perfect time because actually like the weeks leading up to Corsica, like I was having so many breakdowns, just feeling super overwhelmed, super anxious, like not knowing what was going on in my life, which honestly, I feel like a lot of people have these feelings just because, I mean, the whole state of the world just like was not normal and was very different from, you know, the life that we all were used to. So I feel like a lot of people were just, you know, struggling and I was definitely one of them. And this book kind of helped me, again, transform my fear into faith and just really trust in God in the universe and trust that and just have faith in the direction that I was on. So um, yeah, this book helped me a lot during that time. And for some favorite quotes, so, um, and actually this is towards the beginning of the book on page 10. So it says, our happiness, success, and safety can be measured by our genuine capacity to tune into the loving vibration of the universe. And then it also says, the presence of fear is a sure sign that you are trusting in your own strength. And the moment you realign with love and stop relying on your own strength, clear direction will be presented. So the moment you stop relying on yourself, you realign with love and trust in a higher power or again, whoever you believe in, you'll see how things start to fall into place. So yeah, this book definitely helped me out a lot last year. And then the last, but certainly not least, book on this list is called What Happened to You? Conversations on Trauma, Resilience, and Healing by Bruce Perry, who's a psychiatrist, and Oprah Winfrey. Um, so I'm actually listening to this book right now on Audible, and so far, so good. And this book is really about, you know, how the things that we experience as a child, whether they be good or bad, um, are really the basis of how, you know, we as adults perceive the world and other people, um, how we behave. And, you know, if you have an encounter with someone that doesn't sit right, right with you, it's not, you know, oh, what's wrong with this person? It's, well, what happened to them? Or, you know, even with yourself, you know, if you don't feel right or good about something, or if you, you know, feel like you're having crazy thoughts or whatever it might be, it's not what's wrong with you. It's what happened to you to make you have these type of thoughts so that you can really fully understand you know why you're going through what you're going through so that you can heal it um, so yeah I can't remember I think my friend introduced me to this book um, and I was like oh my gosh this is right up my alley I definitely want to read it especially as you know I really am on this healing journey and I have been for for years now and I just think books like this really help you discover a bit more of who you are and why you are the way you are and you know the parts of you that you might need to heal so um, so far so good and I'll read to you guys the opening statement of the book because I thought that this was just so powerful so the book starts with them saying this book is for anyone with a mother father partner or child who may have experienced trauma. And if you've ever had labels like people pleaser, self-sabotager, disruptive, argumentative, checked out, can't hold a job, or bad at relationships used to describe you or your loved ones, this book is for you. Um, so I thought that was so powerful because unfortunately, I feel like there are a lot of us who have either experienced that or know people who have experienced that. So I feel like it kind of applies to a lot of us in, you know, even when it comes to trauma, I do think that we've all gone through something in our lives that um, 
maybe even without knowing it, you know, was a traumatic experience. And I feel like we've all gone through things in our lives that we need to heal from. So yeah, I already see the power and value in this book. And again, I'm only a few chapters in. Um, so yeah, highly recommend this one too. So friends, that's a wrap on the seven books that have changed my life and are changing my life. Um, and definitely let me know what you guys thought. You know, if you've read any of these books, you know, what were the life lessons that you've learned? If you haven't read any of these books, were there any that I shared with you that really spoke to you or resonated with you and that, you know, you do want to read in the future? Let me know. Again, would love, love, love to hear from you. And if you guys are interested in more tips and tools for just how to navigate life, whether it be abroad in Paris or just everyday life, you know, definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel. Definitely get on my email list. I'm always sharing a ton of great tips and information to help you guys out. And and if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up if you like this content around life lessons and whatnot. Um, but yeah, guys, that's all from me. It was so fun to share with you guys the seven books that have changed my life. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.